Hi, I'm Peppy, and today I'm going to be showing you through the basics of making your own beatmap for OS. So basically, I've transferred a song into the songs folder and just starting the game up now. Now, when we go into edit mode, you'll see that the song comes up down the bottom. And when we go in, it'll bring up with the song setup screen. Basically, filling in the song information here. Um, we'll just make a sample easy beat map here. And default difficulty settings, these can be adjusted as you see fit for your beat map. And initially it will bring up the timing screen um, if we just run the song through. And the idea here is to find the first beat in the song and start tapping at that beat. And as you tap, it will attempt to determine the rate at which the song is playing. Now this may take multiple tries to get it perfect, so um, if you do miss the first beat then hit the reset button and start again, or you can manually adjust the offset. Basically the offset is where the first beat occurs, so we want to get this perfect before we go any further. I'm just moving it a bit forward because it didn't seem too right. Now that's sounding quite in time now. Just play around with the beat, beats per minute a bit. Um, see if we can get it any better. And now I'm just going to skip further into the song and check that it's still in time at that point. Basically this is the easiest way to find out if you've got the correct beat here, bits per minute, is to um, play through the song at one time speed or you can skip through it if you're confident. Now, most songs are produced to a constant BPM which is a whole number. Um, you can see here I just changed it 125.01 to 125. Um, this is usually the case where you can set it to a whole number but there are some songs obviously which this isn't the case. some minor adjustments on it now. It's a good idea to spend quite a bit of time on getting the timing correct because this will be used throughout the editing process to get your beats um, exactly where they should be. So I'm pretty happy with that timing now. Let's go into compose mode and start placing some beats. Now on the left hand side you've got the different selection um, and placement modes, and these can be changed by either clicking on them or using 1, 2, 3, 4 on the keyboard, and mouse wheel also adjusts them. So I've just placed a single normal hit circle. You, as you can see, this can be moved around on both the game field and the timeline, and by holding shift, you basically are disabling any snapping, so it doesn't snap to the grid, it doesn't snap to um, the actual timing. Now in saying this, um, every single note that you place is automatically snapped to the timing that you've set up. So you can be ensured that it's, um, by default it gets snapped to the half beat, so basically you can place two notes for every tap that you did before. This can be changed of course. Now, on the right hand side we've got these um, different options for the single circles. I've just um, played around with the new combo one and also the whistle. Whistle is an extra sound and there's also finish. So you can select multiple circles and give them the sounds that you want to add, add to the default sound. And I've just slowed it up to 0.5 times playback speed. So it's a bit easier to place notes in real time. Um, starting new combos is a good idea because it affects the way scoring is adjusted, you can read more about that on the FAQ. Um, I wouldn't let a combo get too far over 10, that's a general guideline. Um, combos can be started by right clicking. Um, right click also deletes notes if you are hovering on a note and it's not playing back. But yeah. Now this is a slider, I've just placed it. Um, 
it consists of points along the slider as you can see those dots and you can basically move a slider wherever you want um, after it's been placed. To place it it's left click and then left click to place further points and right click is when you're finished and you want to end the slider. Um, sliders are a fixed velocity, this is getting a bit technical but um, basically you can't choose how fast the ball is going to go on the slider so you have to make sure you get the length right for the um, length in time that you want the slider to go for. The easiest way to do this is to line up with the ticks that are um, along the slider. Each one will by default be one beat. Now there's a few different curve types for sliders. I just swapped to Bezier, which gives um, smoother curves in general. Um, the default cat mole makes sure the slider will go through every point you place so you can get more shape curves. But this is Bezier. You basically place points and it will interpolate between them so you can get really nice smooth curves without placing too many points. So the other type of line is linear which basically means that it's not going to curve it will just um, take a hard corner. I just realised I want that new combo, so I'll just change it over quickly. But yeah, that's how sliders work. It takes a bit of time to get used to placing them. Um, there's a few tricks to doing it. Uh, if you hold down shift, you can by bypass the grid snapping, of course, which does help with making um, more shaped curves. I'm just playing around here with a cat mole, the default type of curve. It can look a bit ugly if you don't um, adjust it properly. This is where Bezier is actually more useful for curves like this, but just to show you that it is capable of doing that. So right clicking at any point when the song isn't playing will delete whatever's underneath your cursor. I just made a spinner here. Spinners are placed in the same way as uh, sliders. You left click to start them and right click to end them. And it's as simple as that really. Now another thing you can do is select along the timeline and modify selections that you um, have selected. Um, now sliders repeating, there's two ways to do it. One is as you just saw I dragged it along on the timeline. The other way is to not right click for the slide. When you're placing a slider you basically hold it and don't right click um, and let the song play until you want it to stop and then right click. Now, with all notes and all selection, selections, you can flip them around, which helps when you want to repeat the same thing, but give it a bit of variety. Um, it's good for choruses, that kind of thing, where you don't really want to remap all the beats, so you want to reuse what you've already got. Now, as I was saying before, your notes are by default snap, so there's two per tap or 2 per beat. Uh, I just adjusted this to 8 per beat, so you're getting 8th notes, a lot more um, option for where you're placing them. I guess if you want to be really harsh you can um, put some very fast notes, or if you just need the accuracy and precision, the option is there to swap it. The easiest way to get familiar with the editor is to just start on a song and really see how you go. Um, there's quite a few tips up on the site in the forums. Um, I've been writing tips in there, I'll add to that as we go and hopefully make a few more of these videos with further tips.